Hey, I realized in my last video, I didn't really show enough of the controls that are available for the Unreal Engine VR Editor. It's really cool stuff, so I just kind of jumped in and made something I thought looked cool. So in this video, I'll go through more of actually what each of the tools do. Let's do it. So here we are in the VR template map. I've got my HTC Vive wireless and the two wands. If I touch this touchpad on the left controller, I get a little palette, kind of like a painter's palette, of different things I can do. I've got modes, tools, edit, windows, gizmo, snapping, and system, as well as actions, but that's grayed out for good reason right now. And that's pretty much what the left one does. The right controller is really just for interaction. You can interact with the palette, so you could open up a content browser like this. You can grab the window and move it around, however you want. You can grab objects in the world and move them around. While you have it grabbed, you can grab with your other controller and you can spin it and rotate it. You can scale it. You have the uh, top face button at the top of the controller for back inside the painter's palette. Let's delete this cube because it's in the way. So we're going to go down to edit and then hold down on delete. We also have a cut functionality here. That is exactly what you would expect it to do. We have a copy. We could also paste a copy of that one. See? And just keep pasting it all day long. We can uh, grab this cube here and put it way up here. And we can snap it to the floor. Nice and easy. If we do multi select, we can deselect all using the palette as well. Just like that. We can multi select using the top face button of the right controller and selecting them. And then we can duplicate them all. But of course I find that easier to do using the top face button and the move controller. Let's just delete all that. I believe that's it for this part of the palette. So let's go into our tools here. We have a flashlight Simulate simulates physics objects in Unreal, just like you would do any other way, of course. Save does exactly what it sounds like. Pause. You can pause the simulation. You can resume the simulation. You can press play and go into like a player state. Or you can take a screenshot all in the VR editor. It's pretty crazy. Let's go over to modes. We have actors. We have foliage. We'll bring up the foliage window. Nice and easy. We can paint foliage if we had any foliage types here. Pretty easy. Landscape window. These are kind of just shortcuts for bringing up the windows that you could bring up any other way in the actual editor. There it is. You see here we could access the paint window from here as well, the paint foliage. It's just a nice little shortcut. So we go paint here. It's just all the modes you'd find in the actual editor. Let's go over to system. Very simple, we can exit the VR editor and go back to a desktop style mode. Snapping. They have this thing called smart snapping in the editor for VR. It's supposed to be a better version of snapping than what you'd find in the desktop mode. More aggressive because human hands are not perfect. I mean, these controllers, they, they wiggle around a lot. It's easy to accidentally play something where you don't mean to. In my experience so far, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. Set targets, I've actually never used. It's always been grayed out for me. Translate snap. That's how much you're snapping when you're moving an object which snapping in VR is, is fine, but it creates a problem of the user not feeling like they're in control, which is not a good thing in any VR. That's why you don't want to 
push someone out of a plane in VR. That, that could make someone very motion sick very quickly. You can change the snapping values. 50, you know. You'll just see, see how it's snapping along the ground now. It was kind of granular before. Let's make it even higher. Let's make it 100. See, that's much more snappy now. Rotate snap. Exactly what it sounds like. So if we change to the rotation in our gizmo. We can have some snapping inside of the rotation. It's not as dramatic as the translation gizmo, but it's still there. Back up to snapping. The scale snap does exactly what it sounds like. It's just like all the other scaling, all the other snapping. It's set to 0.25. We'll leave it alone. We can change our gizmos to be local space or world space. So if I move one of these objects around and have it placed in a certain position, and I wanted to make a wall out of these blocks, and I had it turned at a 45 degree angle, I could have my gizmo snap at a 45 degree angle, those blocks all the way along, instead of being set to the world rotation, set to the object rotation. The rest of this is really exactly what you would expect. It's just different gizmos. You can scale it up or down. You can do rotate back and forth and translate, of course, however you want to do it. Universal is an interesting one because there's problems with VR. It's not perfect. It's usable, certainly, but it's not perfect. There's not a lot of buttons we have to work with here. There's really not. You got a couple of side buttons, you got the triggers, you got the touch pads. The touch pads are finicky at best. Of course, you could use a Oculus Rift as well, and I've heard they're a little bit better with their thumbsticks, but for the HTC 5, this is what we got. If you choose to use the Universal Gizmo, it's perfect for this type of situation where you don't want to keep going back into the palette, picking a, a method, and then going back. We can just drag it out just like we would do with the, with the translate. We can rotate it just like we would do with the actual rotate gizmo. We can scale it. There we go. We can just scale it in and out, back and forth, whatever we want to do. Windows does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you summon a desktop style window floating in the VR world around you. So if we go here and we grab a content browser, we can just grab it by this little handle here and stick it anywhere. Stick it over here behind us so we can just always turn around, grab an object, throw it in the world. Close it like you would any other window. And you're supposed to be able to scale these windows up and down, but I'm not having luck with it. Um, it worked when I tried it on Windows Mixed Reality, but it does not seem to be working on the HC Vive. Perhaps it's my controller, perhaps it's busted right now, who knows. But as you can see, you can drag it, pull it forward, really get into it. Put your face right up to the text. Nice and blurry, huh? Let's put that back out here. You can navigate through this just like you would anything else. Each pull of the trigger is like a mouse click. Let's close that. You get a details panel, just like you would in the desktop editor. Let's grab one of these. And in here, we can see everything you'd see in the desktop details panel. Of course, we don't really have a keyboard we can mess with. I don't think that we've figured out a good way yet to really do a keyboard in VR. If, if we have index controllers with full finger presence, perhaps we could do something with like turning the controller sideways and you know your, your, your individual fingers could tap keys. But as it stands right now, you got to go into desktop to really do anything fine editing. But we can grab here and just slide up and down, kind of like you could do with a mouse on the desktop version. Same thing with rotation. If you, if you really need to see a number when it's rotating, you could do that. Um, 
you can change, you know, the mobility of it. Uh, you can change the material. You can do anything you could do in the desktop editor right here in this window. Aside from, obviously, anything that requires a text input. Let's close that. You could even create sequences now in VR. This is relatively new. I've yet to mess with this, but it's something that you should be aware of. You have the world settings, of course. So we can go in here and change whatever we want to change. Let's change static lighting scale. You know, let's, um, let's use ambient occlusion, whatever we want to do. Back to the windows, we have the world outliner, same way you do anything else. You can grab each individual item. This might be a quick way to delete everything in a world if you didn't want to deal with trying to select each one manually. You could just select it in, in the viewport like that and then delete. Select in the viewport and delete. If you wanted to do that, you probably could. You could. <laughs> Back to Windows. And the only thing left is the Modes panel. So this is the same panel you'd have on, you know, on default. I think it's on the left-hand side. And it has your painting method, your landscape mode, your, your foliage painter. And that's, that's pretty much it. If you are interacting with an object, you can have sometimes context-sensitive actions. So... In this case, you see now I have another laser pointer shooting out from my uh, Vive wand here. If I grab it, you see I can scale it, rotate it, do whatever. Movement in VR is not perfect. I really wish we had some kind of free locomotion like you find in a lot of VR games, but then again, maybe they designed it this way for, for a reason. I haven't figured out what the reason is yet, but perhaps they did. Maybe it's just there's just not enough controls. So the options we have, we can grab the world with the grip with either controller and just pull the world and push it and fling it up and down. Kind of like you're grabbing, you could think of it as like a table or like the entire world if you were standing outside the earth and you could just grab it and fling it. You could also grab with both grip buttons at the same time and scale the entire world down. Now, this is pretty trippy in VR. It's like looking at a tabletop version of your map. You can rotate the entire thing. You can grab it like you would anything else. Look at it. It's pretty crazy. Doing this, you could really see some fine detail that maybe you couldn't see if you were at player level. So let's just grab this and rotate it around. Let's just get a look at these blocks over here. Just zoom into that. The scale is off, so it's pretty crazy looking. And now the map's all small. Really cool they did this. Alright. Let's just blow that back up to normal size. There we go. Back to normal size. Alright, now we can teleport in the world in addition to grabbing and flinging. So we can go all the way down to the map by doing this, but that's not very fun, is it? So you can press the grip button, and then you can press the trigger on the right controller, and teleport yourself somewhere. Maybe we can grab the world and just move it around. We can teleport anywhere. Let's go over here by these blocks. And you'll see a representation. Funny enough, in real time, it shows you your controller movement, your head movement, the other controller. It's pretty cool. We can just teleport right on top of this. Pretty cool. 
Okay, we could we could even rotate the world when we're at scale as well. So we can just rotate it around. This would be very good if you're in like a seated position doing this, or if you have a cable. Luckily, I have wireless, but that comes with its own set of challenges. Let's just rotate this around. All right. I think that's about it. If I'm forgetting anything, maybe tell me in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.